It's a beautiful night for baseball here at Owen Zack Field in Decorah as we get you set for a Northeast Iowa Conference doubleheader. The Decorah Vikings taking on the Charles City Comets. The Vikings are 15 and 12 overall, 6 and 10 in Northeast Iowa Conference play. The Comets are 7 and 17 overall and 4 and 12 in Northeast Iowa Conference play. Three weeks ago today, the Vikings defeated the Comets in a game that was played at Riceville High School by a 3-1 to one margin due to wet conditions at the Charles City Field. The Vikings will look to win the season series over the Comets here tonight. Brandon Hogan going to the hill for the core up, and he will face this Comet lineup. Tyler Brockney in left, Colton Slinger at second, Nate Lasher at short, Brady Sickman in center, Drew Mitchell the catcher, Theo Arndt the pitcher, Wyatt Stevenson at first base, Jordan Capping at third base, and Noah Schlater in right field. Hogan coming off a win on Tuesday night down at Clayton Ridge, El Cater Central. He was the winning pitcher against the Comets the first go-around, throwing a complete game five hitter, giving up one unearned run, walking none, and striking out three. Hogan overall on the season. The 4-4 four four record, a 261 ERA. Opponents hitting 176 against him. Vikings in the home whites. Comets in the visiting gray and black. And we're about ready to get things underway here on a beautiful afternoon for baseball here at Owen Zach Field in Decora. We'll set the Viking defense here momentarily. As Tyler Brockney stands in from the right-hand side of the plate against the sophomore right-hander Brandon Hogan. And the first pitch is swung on and flown to right field. Underneath it is Trevor Phillips, and he'll make a head-high two-handed catch. One pitch, one out here in inning number one. Defensively for the Cora, the usual, usual suspects. Cole Minks in left, Gabe Varney in center, Trevor Phillips in right. Ryan Thorsten at third, Dawson Meyer at short. At second base, Joe Kanoki at first base, Jake Marlowe with Ian Smith behind the plate. Colton Slinger swings at the first one, a curveball, and it's a swing and a miss, nothing and one. Comets only scored one unearned run against Togan in the first matchup between these two teams two weeks ago. And the first pitch looped towards second in the air, caught at second by Kanoki. And three pitches have retired. The first two batters here in inning number one. Two down, nobody on for Nate Lazier. No score here in the first inning. Comets looking to snap a six-game losing streak here tonight in their regular season finale. Pitch in there for a strike, nothing in one. Their last victory was a week ago Tuesday over North Fayette Valley, 10-3. Since that time, they have losses to Cedar Falls, 2 to New Hampton, 2-0. to And the last night, they lost to St. Ansgar in their home finale. Pitch inside, one ball, one strike. They will play a week from tonight against Waverly Showrock in the same district as the chorus. That one popped towards shallow left. Out is the shortstop, Dawson Meyer. He will make the catch to retire the set. So, an easy first inning for Brandon Hogan. Six pitches retire the Comets here in the first inning. Three up, three down. It's the Comets nothing and Vikings coming to the plate. And the Vikings will bat this way. Joe Kanoki at second base. Gabe Varney in center field. Dawson Meyer at shortstop. Jake Marlowe at first base. Brandon Hogan, the pitcher. Ian Smith, the catcher. Trevor Phillips in right field. Ryan Thorsten at third base. And Cole Minks in left field. That lineup will face sophomore right-hander Theo Arndt. Arndt did not face Decora back three weeks ago today. By the way, Scott Hoppel and Gene Marley are your umpiring tandem today. Hopple working the plate here in game number one. Tyler Brockney in left. 
Brady Sickman in center and Noah Schlater in right for the Comets. Jordan Capping at third, Nate Lasher at short. Colton Slinger at second and at first base is Wyatt, Wyatt Stevenson, Drew Mitchell behind the plate. And Joe Kanoki will be the batter to start things here in the first inning. No score between Decora and Charles City. As Kanoki sprays one out in the left field, it'll be a base hit. So Kanoki ready to attack that first strike, and Kanoki reaches on a single to left center. A runner at first and nobody out, and the batter is Gabe Barney. Kanoki becoming the first base runner of the game. Very comfortable night to watch baseball. There is a breeze that kind of blowing cross field, maybe the left field corner towards the first base Comet dugout. Comet Barney, the left hand hitter. He squares to bunt and bunts foul. Third base side, no balls in one strike. And there's enough of a breeze today that anything in the air perhaps could be an adventure. Capping the third baseman, playing extremely close at third base, expecting another bunt from Varney. Kanoki leads at first base. Arndt comes set, looks back at second for some reason, and the pitch down and in on a breaking ball, and it's one ball, one strike on Gabe Varney. If Charles City sweeps Decora tonight, there will be a fifth place tie in the league. If Decora wins at least one of the games as a move to first base, we'll send Kanoki back to the bag. If Decora wins at least one of the games tonight, they will finish fifth, and Charles City will finish sixth in the league standings. This is the final night of league action. And ball, one strike, and Varney bunts up the third base side, and it rolls foul. So it's one ball and two strikes now on Varney. No score here in the first inning. New Hampton clinched the league title on Monday night, or rather on Tuesday night, with the doubleheader sweep over Walk On and Crestwood taking a game over Waverly. One ball, two strikes to count. Capping still in close at third. Kanoki leads at first. The pitch from Arndt rolled to the right side. A backhand stop made at first by Stevenson. He'll go to second and Lasher to get the lead runner. So a 3-6 fielder's choice and one down here in the inning. Dawson Meyer will stand in with a runner at first and one down. No score here in the bottom of the first inning. Hampton, who hadn't won a league title since 1972 prior to last year, wins their second straight NEIC crown. Arndt comes set and pitch blown away to Dawson Meyer. One ball, new strikes. Bikes will have a couple of non-conference games next week, and we'll have them both on the radio for you. As they will travel to Cedar Falls on Monday night, and they will host Waterloo West on Tuesday night in the home finale. The pause, the 1-0, Meyer hits it well down the left field line, but foul. And it's one ball and one strike count. It's a bit of an irony in the schedule. This is the first Friday night home game of the season for Decora. Basically, they will go back and forth from year to year. You're either going to have a ton of Friday night home games in June or none. And this year was the year they had none. 1-1 delivery sails high for two balls, one strike on Dawson Meyer. The next year will be the majority of games on Friday night will be home games in the month of June for Decora. 2-1 to Meyer, ground ball towards short. Lasher goes to second for the first out, throw to first base, not in time. Another fielder's choice retires the lead runner. Two down in the inning, and the batter is Jake Marlowe. No score here in the first inning. Vikings coming off a little bit of a heartbreaker on Wednesday night when they couldn't protect a 5-0 lead to West Delaware as the 
First pitch inside, one ball, new strikes. A lead at first by Meyer. Arndt comes to a belly high set. A good breaking ball taken on the outside edge for strike one to Marlowe. It is one ball, one strike. Meyer, a couple of steps off the first base bank. Arndt comes to a belly high set. Meyer goes. Marlowe swings and fouls one at the plate. It is one ball and two strikes on Marlowe. Ernst trying to get out of things here in the first inning after giving up a leadoff single to Kenoki. Meyer with a three-stride lead at first base, held on there by Stevenson. And one-two to Marlowe, off speed and taken high. Two balls, two strikes to count. Deuce is wild on the Viking first baseman, Jake Marlowe. Meyer away from first. The pause. Meyer goes and the pitch swung on and mit, fouled at a curveball. Marlowe doing a decent job of protecting on a pretty good deuce from Theo Arndt, the sophomore catcher. Perhaps Arndt and Mitchell may be a little crossed up as Arndt and Mitchell meet at the bottom of the mound. Mitchell, the junior, Arndt, the sophomore. The upperclassman actually gets the pitcher to meet him halfway. Two balls, two strikes to count remains. And the 2-2 delivery with the runner going, swinging a pop-up into shallow center field. Underneath it is Sickman. He will make the catch to retire the side. So a leadoff single, but nothing else. We head to the second inning. It is a scoreless game. Top of the second inning we go. Top of the second inning we go. A scoreless game between Decor and Charles City. Game one of a Northeast Iowa Conference doubleheader tonight. Brady Sickman, Drew Mitchell, and Theo Arndt here in the middle third of the order to face Brandon Hogan, who got out of the first inning on three pop-outs and six pitches. Sickman, the cleanup hitter, the left-hand hitter versus the right-hander Hogan in the first offering over the outside edge in for a strike. Nothing in one. Hogan ready. And the next offering. Breaking ball outside edge for a strike. And it's nothing in two now. Hogan well ahead in the 0-2 delivery. Swing a foul. Third base side and over Goose Island Drive. It is no balls and two strikes to count. Mitchell and Arndt to follow here in the top of the second inning. Brandon ready and the 0-2 offering. Fastball missed outside to the left hand hitting six minutes. One ball and two strikes. Some are getting down there. One week from tonight, the postseason starts down in Waverly as the Breaking ball goes outside. Two balls, two strikes to count. And the pitch swing and a pop up. Shallow left center of field. Out is the shortstop Meyer. Meyer is under it and he will make a two handed head high catch, backpedaling a bit. And there's one down here in the second inning. And just an example of how time's moving by quickly. Seven weeks from tonight, it's the opening of high school football. The catcher, Drew Mitchell, will bat one down, nobody on, no score here in the top of the second inning. Hogan's delivery is a swing and a pop-up on the infield. Actually in foul ground, Ian Smith on the third base side of home plate will make the catch in foul territory. So quickly, two up, two down in the second inning. Two down, nobody on. And it's the pitcher against pitcher matchup, Theo Arndt. Theo Arndt. 
You have a sophomore versus a sophomore. The pitching matchup here tonight. Aren't a right-hand thrower, a left-hand batter, and you look at a strike, nothing in one. Sign from Smith, Hogan ready in the 0-1 offering. That one looped towards the middle of the infield. Dawson Meyer leaps and makes the catch to retire the side. So Meyer, a lunging grab in shallow center field. And the Comets go down in order once again. Three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the second inning. It is a 0-0 game. Brandon Hogan starts things here in the bottom of the second inning. He'll take a curveball low from Theo Arndt. One ball, no strikes. A pitcher against pitcher matchup ended the top half of the second inning and begins the bottom half of the second inning. The 1-0 hammered down the left field line just foul. Just to the left of the chalk up the third base sign. It's one ball, one strike on Brandon Hogan, who will be followed by Ian Smith and Trevor Phillips. In inning number two, scoreless game, Decora and Cheryl City. Decent crowd on hand here tonight for the early going of this one. One and one the count and the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. He'll get through for a base hit. So Brandon Hogan. It's Decora's second hit, and the Vikes get their leadoff runner on for the second consecutive inning. And Bryce Hosting will be the courtesy runner for Hogan at first base. Running at first base. Hosting at first, nobody out. Ian Smith will be the batter. At the plate, Ian Smith. No score here in the second. Close at third is capping. Smith squares to bunt does so right in front of the plate. Bare hand pickup made by Arnt and an easy toss at first base to Stevenson. Completes the sacrifice. 1-3 with Hosting moving up to second base. And Trevor Phillips will get an RBI opportunity. Phillips doubled his hit total on Wednesday for the season. He had two hits against West Delaware, including... A double that almost left the yard down there in Manchester. A runner at first, or runner at second with one down and a wild pitch back to the screen. Gets by Mitchell, so Hosting moves up to third base on the play. And a 1-0 and count on Trevor Phillips now. Minfield going to be up at the corners and back up the middle. They'll trade the out for the run. If the ball's hit up the middle. They'll come home with it if it goes to the corners. A curve goes low and away. Two Phillips, and it's two balls, no strikes. So DeCora with the first real scoring chance of this game. Aren't working out of the stretch. The pause and the 2-0 to Phillips. Swung on and a fly ball towards center field. Retreating a Sickman. He will make the catch in deep right center. Hosting will tag. He will score without a play. Phillips gets the sacrifice fly. And the Vikings have a 1-0 lead. Trevor Phillips with the sacrifice fly for the Vikes to draw first blood. A good job here in the second of getting them on, getting them over, and getting them in. As that's the fourth RBI of the season for Trevor Phillips. Base is empty, two down for Ryan Thorsten. A one nothing lead for DeCora. Hogan led off with a single to center. It was courtesy runner hosting sacrifice to second. Wild pitch got him to third. And the Phillips sacrifice fly. Got him home. A curveball is swung on and missed by Thorsten. The ball's in one strike. Aren't in at Mitchell for the side. And the 0-1 delivery and a fastball taken for a strike. Ryan tried to pull the trigger and just couldn't do it. It's no balls and two strikes now. Nothing into the count. 
0-2, curveball, one hopper right back to Arndt. Arndt will run over towards first base and give an underhand toss to Stevenson to retire the set. For the Vikes draw, first blood, one run, one hit. No errors, nobody left. We are two innings complete. Decora has a 1-0 lead. No score or 1-0, Decora, as we go to the top half of the third inning. Brandon Hogan has retired the first six men that he has faced all on pop-ups. Wyatt Stevenson, the first baseman, will start things here in the top half of the third inning. One run, two hits for Decora, nothing across yet for the Comets. Hogan's first offering is smacked into left field. Cole Minx coming on, and he'll make a running grab in medium depth left field. One pitch, one out here in the third. Again, anything in the air today might be a little bit of an adventure with the breeze, but Minx had a beat on that one from the get-go. And Cole's been real, real solid out in left field, not only this year, but when he played out there last year. Jordan Capping swings the first one, grounds one toward short, backhand stop made by Meyer. He lost his feed and throws to first base, but late. Meyer went to the backhand, tried to plant, lost his footing, and that allowed Capping to reach with an infield single. So the Comets get their first base runner, and Noah Schlitter will stand in with one on, one out here in the third inning. Hogan will work out of the stretch for the first time in this game. one nothing to Cora here in the third. Schlater squares to bunt, looks at a strike outside edge. Nothing in one. Thorsten even with the bag at third. And a move to first base, close play, and capping back in there. Right-hander versus right-hander. Schlater, the number nine hitter in the Comet lineup. The pause, the 0-1. Schlater squares to bunt. Foul. Third base side, so it's no balls and two strikes. So we'll see if Coach Tyler Downing keeps the bunt on in this situation. Downing in the third base box. And Larry Wolf in the first base box for the Comets. There he got back into the coaching end of things, coaching ninth grade baseball at Charles City this year. He's the assistant principal at the high school over there, of course. Larry had some great teams over at Walk-On and softball over the years. Longtime assistant under Don Kennan in basketball as well. The ball's two strikes with one down. Pitch to Schlater. Ground ball towards second. Two hopper. Kanoki will go to Meyer for the first out. Meyer to Marlowe for the double play. 4-6-3. And the side is out here in the third inning. One hit. Nobody left. We head to the bottom of the third. It is Decora leading Charles City 1-0. one nothing Decora as we head to the bottom of the third inning. I'll be on the air three times next week. Monday night we'll have Decora baseball at Cedar Falls at five at seven o'clock. Tuesday night we'll have the home finale as Decora will take on Waterloo West at seven thirty, and then next Friday night it'll be Decora and Crestwood at five o'clock from Waverly in the first round of the tournament. Cole Minx will stand in from the right-hand side of the plate, swings and fouls at the first pitch. No balls and one strike. Capping, the third baseman for Charles City, plays a very shallow third base, so Minx, who had a couple of bunch singles on Wednesday afternoon against West Delaware, might not be able to do that with the shallowness of capping at third today. The pitch goes high. One ball, one strike to count. One nothing to Cora on a sacrifice fly by Trevor Phillips. In the bottom of the second inning, 1-1. One, one. Smacked in the left and base hit. The Vikes have gotten their leadoff runner on in three consecutive innings. Cole's had himself a nice senior year here in baseball. A runner at first, nobody out, and Joe Kanoki will be the batter. He's singled the left to start the first 
Oh, one for one. This is Vikings Radio, 1240 KDEC, the core in KDECradio.com. Darren Swenson from Owen Zach Field here tonight for Northeast Iowa Conference Baseball. Decora leading Charles City here in game one of the doubleheader. one nothing. Minx takes off. Pitch outside. Throw down to second. In time, Lazier takes the throw from Mitchell. And Minx caught stealing 2-6. That was a heck of a throw from Drew Mitchell that time as Minx erased from the base pass. It's 1-0 oh on Kenoki now with one down. In the top half of the third inning. Aren't ready in the 1-0 offering up and out. And it's two balls, no strikes. On Joe Kenoki. Aren't gets the sign from Mitchell. And the 2-0 delivery swing a Foul tip into the glove of the catcher, Mitchell. It's two balls, one strike on the off-speed offering. Two more games left in the regular season after tonight's playing date. Of course, one game after this one tonight. 2-1 delivery outside for three balls and one strike. So. I'm sure somewhere out there, somebody has a way to... Stop Summer from being on the fast forward button. If anyone can figure that out, they'd be a millionaire. Three one, smacked into right field. Picking it up in right is Schlater. He'll throw to first base, not in time. As Kenoki will get a single to right and Joe now two for two in the game. A runner at first and one down. The batter is Gabe Barney, who hit into a force play in the first. 0 for one, one nothing to core up. As we play the bottom half of the third inning. Sunny, comfortable, breezy night here in Decor. A lot less humid than it's been the rest of the week. Aren't back to the stretch. Capping in close at third. Holding the runner on at first to Stevenson. And now Aren't steps off the rubber. Aren't in at Mitchell for the sign. Comes set in the pitch, ground ball towards second. Fielded there by Schlinger to Lazar at second for one to Stevenson at first, not in time. A fielder's choice, 4-6, erases Kenoki from the base pass. Two down, runner at first for Dawson Meyer, who also hit into a force play in inning number one, 0 for 1. Bikes with four hits. And Charles City with only one thus far as we play the bottom of the third. one nothing to Cora with the lead. Righty-righty matchup. Aren't comes set. A bluff go from Barney in the pitch low from My or to Meyer. One ball, no strikes. Varney away from first. Aren't comes to a belly high set. Varney bluffs going and a curveball taken low. It is two balls, no strikes now on Dawson. I actually checked it, and Jay Marley, the base umpire, said incomplete. Two balls, no strikes with two down. Aren't come set in the 2 0. -oh. Swinging a foul, third base side. Two balls and one strike to count. Postseason play beginning for. Area 2A teams tomorrow night. 2A and 1A will play district baseball on Tuesday night as well. Of course, softball postseason underway. Regional semifinals in 1A, 2A, and 3A tonight. A move to first base and Barney back to the bag diving. Three strides off the bag at first is Gabe Varney. Stevenson holds him on over there. Arndt gets the side from Mitchell. Comes to a belly high set, and the 2-1 is high. It's now three balls and one strike on Dawson Meyer. Jake Marlowe hoping for a turn on deck. A Trevor Phillips sacrifice fly in the second has given Decora a 1-0 lead. 
3-1, Varney goes, pitch swung on, driven. Deep left field, retreating is Brockney. He is under it, and he will make the catch in deep left field to retire the side. Dawson got all of that. Had the wind not been blowing in, it could have been a lot more interesting, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Two hits, one left, three complete. It is Decora leading one nothing. One nothing Decora as we go to the top of the fourth inning. Brandon Hogan hasn't struck out anybody and hasn't walked anybody, but has only given up one hit and has faced the minimum through three innings. It swung on and missed by the leadoff hitter, Tyler Brockney. Brockney on the first pitch of the game flew out to right, and Trevor Phillips, no balls and one strike. But Trevor Phillips sacrificed flying the second, brought home to Cora's lone run as that one looped down to the right field line and foul. And it lands about 30 feet in front of the Comet bullpen up the right field side. So Hogan well ahead at no balls and two strikes. The only hit for Charles City, an infield single for capping. As the ball got retrieved in, Scott Hopple tried to play the short hop behind the plate, but the scoop didn't work. E blue. The ball's two strikes to count. Hogan ready in the 0-2 offering. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Hogan gets his first strike out as Brockney fans on three pitches. One down in the inning. One nothing to Cora. Colton Slinger popped the second, his first time up 0 for 1. Second baseman, Colton Slinger. Slinger looks at a curve for a strike, nothing in one. So four pitches and four strikes for Hogan thus far here in the fourth. Brandon's been on his game thus far. The o one, a swing and a foul at the plate, no balls and two strikes. Again, if you can call it a conference ramification, if Decora wins one of the games tonight, they will finish fifth by themselves in the league. If Charles City sweeps this doubleheader, it will be a fifth place tie between Decora and Charles City. 0 oh, 2 sales high. It is one ball and two strikes. Bottom line, outside of conference play this year, Decora has represented itself very well. 1-2 delivery, swing and a miss, strike three, Hogan. With his second consecutive strikeout, two down here in the fourth inning. Decora's Northeast Iowa Conference record of 6-10 and ten is nothing to write home about, but the fact of the matter is, As the pitch is strike to Lazier, they are 9-2. and two. Away from conference play this year, the pitch outside, one ball and one strike. Their only losses away from conference were North Fayette Valley and Wednesday night against West Delaware. Curveball grounded towards third. Thorsten to his left, picks it up, throws to first base, and Lazier retires. So three up, three down here in the fourth inning. We are halfway home in game one of this conference doubleheader. It is one nothing to Cora. Jake Marlowe swings at the first pitch of the fourth inning, grounds one to third, capping with the sidearm throw to first, retires Marlowe. One pitch, one out here in the fourth inning. Brandon and Brandon Hogan will be the batter. Hogan's done well with his right arm thus far, and with the stick, he's one for one. He's singled. And his courtesy runner scored the lone run of the game back in the second inning. First pitch outside from Arndt, one ball and no strikes. Arndt's given up four hits, hasn't walked anybody or struck out anybody through three and a third thus far. The pitch, the strike, it's one-on-one. -on -one. 
One down here in the fourth inning. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball, fly ball, center field. Brady Sickman is under it. In medium depth center, makes a head high catch off to his left side. And there's two down in the inning. Arndt has yes to retire the side in order. Ian Smith will try to prevent him from doing so. He had a sacrifice back in the second inning. So no official at bat yet for Ian. The pitch swung on a looper out in the right field. That will be caught out in right field. A diving catch made by Noah Schlater. And that's that for inning number four. The bikes go down in order. Three up, three down. We head to the fifth inning. It is Decorah 1 and Charles City nothing. Brandon Hogan has faced the minimum through four and has only given up one hit. Brady Sickman will look at the first pitch outside. One ball, no strikes, and Hogan has only thrown now 37 pitches in the game. It's a one nothing lead for Decorah as we start the top of the fifth. A run in the second inning as Sickman swings and misses. It's one and one. Brandon Hogan led off with a single. Sacrifice to second. Wild pitch got his courtesy runner hosting to third. And he came home on a Trevor Phillips. Sacrifice fly. Breaking ball outside corner for a strike. And it's one and two now on Sickman. Nobody on, nobody out here in the fifth. The one-two delivery swing and a miss. Strike three. So Hogan has now struck out three of the last four men he has faced. That's Drew Mitchell. One down, nobody on for Drew Mitchell, who fouled out to catcher Ian Smith back in the second. Brandon looking for win number five, which would be tops on the squad. As Mitchell rolls one past the lunging, Thorsten and into left field for a base hit. So Mitchell with a one-out single here in the fifth inning. He becomes the Comets' first base runner since the one-out single by capping back in inning number three. So one on, one out. So Hogan will go to an unfamiliar position, the stretch in this game. Mitchell does have a courtesy runner over at first base. I believe it's Elliot Sinwell on a move to first base. Back to the bag diving is Sinwell. And it is Sinwell. I have confirmed if he's wearing the right jersey number. Sometimes you got to put an asterisk by those things. No count yet on the left-hand hitting Arn, who popped a short his first time up. He pushes a bunt up the third base side. Thorsten Fields throws to first base. And the out recorded. Marlowe on the receiving end of the toss from Thorsten. The sacrifice complete 5-3. A runner at second, two down. Sinwell the first runner to reach second base today for the Comets. Wyatt Stevenson flew out to left in the third and he'll Look at a strike, nothing in one. One nothing to Cora, top half the fifth inning. The pause, a look back at second in the 0-1, swing and a foul back. There's no balls and two strikes now. From Hogan to Stevenson. Pause, a look back at second, a second look at second, the 0-2. Fastball just missed the outside edge. And it is one ball, two strikes on Wyatt Stevenson now. 
One nothing to Cora, top half of the fifth, runner at second, two down, the pitch swing, and a foul at the plate. As Stevenson swung at the pitch that was tailing inside towards him. And apparently it was a foul ball. Stevenson must have made contact with him as Scott Hopple, the home plate umpire, threw his hands up and vocally called out the vocal call of foul right away. Tyler Downing out to make sure Stevenson was okay, and he was. So it's one ball, two strikes with two down. The one-two delivery sails alone away. So now the deuce is wild on the Comet first baseman. Tying run at second here in the top half of the fifth inning. Been a good ball game thus far. Decora leads at 1 0. 2 2 delivery. Fastball up. And now it's 3 and 2. Three balls, two strikes, the cat. The pause, the 3 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. One hit, one left. We stretch at Decora. It's 1 0 Vikings. Trevor Phillips smacks a single to left on the first pitch of the bottom half of the fifth inning. So a runner at first, nobody out for Ryan Thorsten. one nothing to Corey here in the bottom of the fifth. The pause, Thorsten squares to bunt and bunts it foul at the plate and snowballs and one strike. Thorsten in his first at bat, grounded back to the pitcher. Nothing and one the count. The pause. The 0 1. Thorsten squares to bunt and pulls it back and looks at it down and away. One ball, one strike the count. Capping, playing close at third. The pause and the pitch as Thorsten bunts it and bunts it foul. It's one ball, two strikes. One and two the count. Nobody out, runner at first. Phillips on base for the first time after having a sacrifice fly in inning number Two, the only RBI of the game. One nothing to Cora leads it. And the one two delivery sliced it down the right field line, but foul. Landing near the Comet bullpen. So one ball, two strikes to count. Rum eight. One and two the count. Stepping off is. Aren't. Aren't back in for the sign from Mitchell. Comes set and a 1 2 delivery sails high to Thorsten. It is two balls, two strikes now. A lead at first by Phillips, held on there by Stevenson. Arndt comes set, looks back at second. The 2-2 to Thorsten. Outside corner, strike three, Colt. First strikeout of the evening for Arndt. One down here in the fifth inning. And the batter will be Cole Minx, who singled left his first time up in the third. Vikings with four hits, Comets with two. The correction, five hits after the Phillips single in at this fifth inning for Takura. A move to first base, back to the bag, diving awkwardly was Phillips. He got back in there. Might not have looked pretty, but hey, the job got done.
the paws and the pitch. Low and away. One ball, new strikes on Cole Minx. The paws, the 1 0. Swing and a foul at the plate. It is one ball and one strike. The pause and the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a pop-up third base side. The shortstop Lazier under it, and he will make the catch for the second out here in the inning. And the batter will be Joe Kanoki. Kanoki, two for two thus far, single to left in the first inning, and a single to right in the third. Lead off man, Joe Kanoki. Two and two the count. Or two for two is number two, I should say. Got ahead of myself, has moved to first base. We'll send uh, Phillips back to the bag. Pitch, low and away. It is one ball, no strikes. Phillips away from first. Aren't in at Mitchell for the side to the left hand hitting Kanoki and the next pitch sails high. It's two balls, no strikes now. The 2-0 delivery. Fast ball up. Three balls, no strikes now. Aren't ready. 3-0. Outside corner is Joe takes all the way. It's three balls and one strike. Likes looking to add on to their 1-0 lead. They got a run in the second on a Trevor Phillips. Sacrifice fly. Three balls, one strike, and the pitch. Outside, ball four. That is the first walk for either pitcher in this game. Phillips second, Kenoki first, Varney to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Getting to a force play in the first, did so again in the third, up again here in the fifth. The pitch by Arndt, a curveball low. One ball, new strikes. As Arnton gets a new baseball from home plate umpire Scott Hopple. The runner at second is Phillips. He let off the inning with a single. Then Thorsten struck out looking. Minx popped out. Then Kenoki walked. The pause and the pitch. Outside corner for a strike. And it's one and one now on Varney. one nothing game. Neither team has committed an error. There's only been one walk in this game. It's been good baseball here tonight. One ball, one strike. The pitch outside corner for a strike again. Good backdoor breaking ball, and it's one ball and two strikes. Away from second, Phillips. Away from first is Kenoki. Aren't come set. A look back at second in the pitch. Lone away. Two balls, one strike on or actually two balls, two strikes, I'm sorry, on Varney.
The pause, the 2 2. Swing and a looper out in a shallow left center field. Yeah, out is the shortstop, Lazarus, who makes his catch with his back to the infield. It was a snow cone grab in shallow left center field to retire the side. One hit, two left. We head to the sixth inning. It is a one nothing lead for Decorah. Eight nine and one due for Charles City here in the sixth inning. It's a one nothing lead for Decorah. Up one five and zero oh for Decorah. Zero two and zero for Charles City. Jordan Capping swings the first one, flies one towards left center field. Back is Varney. Now he comes in a few steps and makes a two handed chest high catch. One pitch, one out here in the sixth inning. Brandon Hogan has only given up. Two hits, he struck out three, he hasn't walked anybody. In fact, the control has been good enough today that Brandon has only gone to a three ball count once against a Charles City hitter through 17 batters. Swinging at the first one and fouling it back with Schlater, no balls and one strike, Schlater into a double play back in the third inning to end at that frame. A Trevor Phillips sacrifice fly to score Bryce hosting a courtesy runner for Brandon Hogan back in the first the only run thus far is a soft liner back to the mound caught by Hogan there's two down here in the sixth inning so two down nobody on and the top of the order Tyler Brockney will start the third trip around the order 15, Tyler Brockney. Brockney flew out to right in the first and struck out swinging in the fourth all game about an hour old. Decora leading one nothing pitch. Blown away. One ball, no strikes. The pause, the 1 0. Swing and a pop up foul. Third base side. Ryan Thorsten is under it in foul ground. He will make the catch to retire the side. So, an easy sixth inning for Hogan. Three up, three down. Bottom of the sixth we go. Decorah leading one nothing. Elliot Sinwell now in right field for Charles City. As we start the bottom half of the sixth inning. Meyer Marlow Hogan, three, four, and five for Decorah as they look for some insurance. It's a one nothing lead for Decorah. That lone run back in the second inning. Has been the difference thus far. Pitch goes low. It's one ball, no strikes. Likes haven't had a ton of base runners tonight. You really got to compliment the job Arndt has done. This pitch taken for a strike by Meyer. One ball, one strike. Meyer hit into a force play in the first inning and flew out to left in the third. A ball and a strike to count. 1-1 one, one delivery, low from Arndt, two balls and one strike. Arndt's only throwing 68 pitches as well. Meyer trying to reach base for the first time safely tonight. Two balls, one strike, and the pitch well in the dirt as Arndt kind of spiked it. It is three balls and one strike to count. Arndt wheels and deals, and the pitch. Round ball toward short. It's a two-hopper to Lazier. to loop the throw across the diamond to retire his fellow shortstop. One down here in inning number six. If you're looking ahead to the Comet seventh, it'll be hitters two, three, and four. Colton Slinger, Nate Lasher, and Brady Sickman. That part of the order is a combined 0 for 6 against Hogan. One down, nobody on. Marlowe, the batter, flew out to center in the first, grounded to third in the fourth. 1-5-0 and for Decora, 0-2-0 and for Charles City. As Marlowe smacks a single into left field, tried to scoop it with Brock, he couldn't get it, and the ball got by him. Marlowe will put the brakes on at first base. 
I don't know if Marlowe was going full speed out of the box, but nonetheless, Marlowe gets the single to left, the sixth of the night for the quarter hour, runner on first and one down. Brandon Hogan. And the batter will be Brandon Hogan, singled and scored in the second, and flew out to center in the fourth inning. In at third is capping. Decent lead at first by Marlowe. Arndt comes to a set. And the first pitch to Brannon. Swings at a hanger and fouls it back to the screen. No balls and one strike. Nothing and one the count. Cora looking for some insurance. They're up one nothing. Pause, the 0-1, swung on, driven towards left field, retreating is Brockney. He will make a one-handed snag in medium to deep left for the second out of the inning. So Hogan now one for three. He had singled, flew out, and flew out again. And the batter will be Ian Smith. Ian Smith. Ian had a sacrifice in the second inning. And flew out to right to end the fourth inning. Marlo, the runner at first with two down. Removed to first base, and Marlo back diving to the bag on a relatively close play. That wasn't even Ernst's best move. 1 6 and 0 for the core up. In two, three, and four due for Charles City in the top half of the seventh inning. And now Mitchell out to talk to Ernst to make sure those two are on the same page. Ernst in at Mitchell for the sign. Comes set and the pitch. Round ball towards the left side. Capping will field at third. He'll throw across the diamond to retire the side. One hit, one left. Bikes will look to close it out next. They lead it one to nothing. Two, three, and four for Charles City to face Brandon Hogan, trying to seal the deal on his fifth win of the season. The Vikes need to get out. 19, 20, and 21 before he can call it a day, at least in this game, as Colton Slinger will be the batter. He'll look at a strike, nothing in one. Hogan with just his 49th pitch of the game right there. Slinger popped a second in the first, struck out swinging in the fourth. 1 6 and 0 for the Vikings, 0 2 and 0 for Charles City. And the 0 1 delivery, low and away. It is one ball, one strike on Slinger. Been an errorless game thus far. There's only been a total of one walk. Hogan has struck out four, walked none. The pitch goes high. It's two balls, one strike. He, in fact, in 19 batters faced, he has only gone to a three-ball count once. But the margin only one nothing. 2-1, looped out in a shallow left, retreating is Dawson Meyer, a step onto the outfield grass. He will make the catch from his shortstop position, one down in the seventh inning. One down, nobody on for Nate Lazier. Popped a short in the first, grounded to third in the fourth inning. First pitch. In there for a strike, nothing in one. Hogan has four wins, trying to pick up his second one against Charles City this year. Hogan had a shutout against Wacon about a week and a half ago. One swung on fly ball into left field, hustling in is Cole Minx. He is under it. He makes the catch for the second out here in the seventh inning. And the last hope for the moment for Charles City is Brady Sickman. One nothing to Cora Top, the seventh. Sickman popped to short in the second, struck out swinging in the fifth. 
One nothing to Cora. Trevor Phillips sacrifice fly scored Bryce hosting in the second. That's the lone run of this ball game. Sickman looks at the first pitch outside. One ball, new strikes. Only hits were a Mitchell single to left with one out in the fifth and a capping infield hit in the third with one out. 1-0 delivery is low. Two balls and no strikes from Hogan to Sickman. Mike's trying to get that elusive out number 21. Hogan ready. And the 2-0 offering down and in. It's now three balls and no strikes. Got a tough customer in Drew Mitchell on deck. And Hogan doesn't want to put the tying run on base, that's for sure. Three balls, no strikes to count. 3-0 delivery in there for a strike, and it's now three balls and one strike. Sixtieth pitch of the game for Hogan. 3-1 outside ball four. That's his first walk. Tying run on base for Charles City. Drew Mitchell will be the batter. He has one of the two hits for Charles City, a single to the left in the fifth. That was after fouling out in the second. Two down, runner at first, one nothing to Cora Top, the seventh. And the pitch swung out, popped up. Ian Smith under it and foul ground on the first base side. Makes the catch, and that's a Viking victory. Brandon Hogan gets his fifth win of the year and his second shutout of the year as the Vikings defeat Charles City one to nothing. One run, six hits, no errors, and five left for Decora. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left for Charles City. Hogan, the winning pitcher, he's now five and four. Theo Arndt, not too bad of an effort for him. Six hits, one run, it was earned, one walk, and one strikeout. He is the losing pitcher. So the Vikings are 16 and 12 now, 7 and 10 in conference play. And Charles City drops to 7-18 overall and 4-13 and in conference play. Game 2 will come up here in about 20 to 30 minutes on Vikings Radio 1240. KDEC at Decorah. <laughs> 